What is going on everyone? Leon checking in. And today we are here with another video on how to edit video on a Chromebook version 2.0. Editing video on the Chromebook isn't something new we've been doing as you can tell by the title of this video. At the time this video was posted, editing video on a Chromebook is certainly more complicated than on a Windows PC or a Mac. So why do we even bother? What it really comes down to is the technology. When it comes to editing video on a Chromebook, this is still fairly new. In fact, there are many people out there that still think that you can't edit video on a Chromebook. And just with any new technology, you have to have new and early adopters who are going to experiment with it to help decide its future and that's why I do video editing on a Chromebook to show people it can be done get the message out there more people will edit videos hopefully and that'll show developers that we need this kind of software it'll show Google we need it and hopefully the Chromebook will be a useful tool when it comes to video editing in the future plus there is the fact that Chromebooks come in at a good price they are fairly cheap so this can help anyone get into the video editing game and just get started with the project. So the whole purpose of this video is to give you my honest opinion about editing video on a Chromebook and what I have here is the Pixelbook if you've been following the channel. So when it comes to editing video on a Chromebook, this video is going to have some helpful tips. It's going to have some problems that I've run into while editing video on a Chromebook and some creative ways to work around those problems to help make the video editing process a little bit easier. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about here when it comes to editing video on a Chromebook is you're going to want to make sure that you have enough storage and also a touchscreen could be helpful. When it comes to storage on a Chromebook, I recommend a device that has at least 32 gigabytes. Now if you're looking to download a lot of media along with editing your video, I actually recommend 64 gigabytes of internal storage. And if you really want to play safe, you can go with 128 or more. That's actually what I have on the Pixelbook. And for some people that might be overkill because I've got apps, I've got music, I've got videos on here and I still have a lot of space to edit my videos. So if you're unsure and you don't want to spend a lot of money, 64 gigabytes might be the sweet spot. Now you may be wondering why do I need a Chromebook with a lot of storage? If I get a Chromebook that doesn't have as much storage, maybe only 16 gigs, can I just use a flash drive or an SD card? And the thing about Chromebooks is that they do have ports to support USB type A or USB type C like how I have on this flash drive here. It has both ports and some Chromebooks also have SD card ports. But the thing is, the apps don't all work with them. Basically, apps can't read from external storage. Now, I have been reading up on this, and there is a way to work around it by going into the shell and changing a command line. But I don't do anything like that. But it is a possibility if you're someone who is looking into doing that. And perhaps maybe in the future, we'll talk about it. And there are talks about apps eventually being able to read from external storage. But for the time being, it is a little bit complicated. Along with the storage, it also helps have a Chromebook that has a touchscreen like the Pixelbook here, and that'll help with precision. Plus, if you add a pen in there, it'll just help when it comes to clipping or trimming timelines. It'll just make things that much more easier. The second tip we want to talk about is purchasing a Chromebook that has access to the Google Play Store. Now, the good news is if you buy a Chromebook today or you bought a fairly new Chromebook, it should have access to the Play Store. You may have to go in and enable it, or you may be waiting for the update still, but it should be coming very soon. However, if you have an older Chromebook, it may not be getting access to the Play Store at all, and that's when purchasing a new Chromebook may come into consideration. Now, just in case you don't know what Chromebooks are supported by the Play Store, I'm going to post a link in the description of this video to help you out. So you may be wondering, why do I need access to the Play Store on my Chromebook? And that's because it'll help make for the best video editing experience on a Chromebook. Now, of course, if your Chromebook doesn't support the Play Store, you could try the Chrome OS Web Store. There are video editing apps in there that are in the form of browser extensions, but I don't recommend them only because they're a little bit more complicated to work with and time consuming. So if you're looking for the easiest route to editing video on a Chromebook, it's going to be through the Play Store. 
The third thing we're going to talk about here is apps that are not optimized for the Chromebook because they were originally designed to work on Android. And this can be a fairly common problem, especially when it comes to video editors that you're going to find on the Play Store because of course, they were designed for Android phones. However, these are things that we have to work with and they're gonna be our best choices when it comes to editing video on a Chromebook. If we jump into the Play Store and do a search for video editors, as you can see, we're going to get back quite a few results. However, if we click on some of these apps and look at the description, we'll get the warning that this app may not be optimized for your device. And the thing about the Play Store on the Chromebook is even if an app doesn't state this, it may still have issues. What this means is the video editor app you may download may not fit your screen completely, functions in the app may be broken, or clips may fail to import, along with other issues that could possibly arise from this. And again, this could happen even if the app does not say this app may not be optimized for your device. So although there are quite a few video editor apps on the Play Store, there's only a handful that work decently on a Chromebook. So for the time being, we have to experiment and pick the video editor app that works best for us. And for those who are looking for a decent video editor app, I've been using PowerDirector for some time now. Now it has gone through some updates and there are some functions that are no longer working as they were at the beginning. But ultimately, I find it's a really good app if you're looking to get video editing done on a Chromebook. The fourth thing we're going to talk about today is avoid shooting in UHD. 4K and I use a smartphone. I have a Nexus 6P for those of you who follow the channel already know that and that is a smartphone that supports UHD 4K. Now of course this format is going to look really nice but it may cause some problems when it comes to editing video on a Chromebook. The nice thing about editing video on a Chromebook is you can use these clips in your video editing process. However, some video editor apps may require you to convert that UHD 4K clip to standard definition, especially if you are looking to do a picture-in-picture -picture clip, or if you already have a picture-in-picture -picture clip in the timeline. Now this can become a huge headache if you already have a UHD video clip in the very beginning of the timeline, and now it's later on in the timeline and you wanna do a picture-in-picture -picture video clip. But some video editor apps such as PowerDirector, if you did the UHD clip in the very beginning of the timeline, it won't allow you to do a picture in picture clip later on. And that's when you're gonna have to start all over with your video editing app. And that's a warning because I have been there, I have done that. And that, that really sucks. Now the reason you may wanna just shoot in standard definition too on your device is that you won't have to waste time converting these video clips if the video editor app requires it. And if you're just doing some basic video, nothing crazy, you really don't need that UHD 4K footage. You can just avoid it and it'll make your life that much more easier. Change your recording format from UHD 4K to standard definition by clicking on the menu in the top left hand corner. Then we're gonna click on the gear icon, that'll be the settings, and we're gonna scroll down to the video section. And the main thing we wanna look at is the back video camera resolution. And if that's set to UHD 4K, we're gonna to wanna to click on that. Now as you can see, we can choose a different format. So we're gonna go with the HD 1080p. And in this case, when it comes to PowerDirector, we won't have to convert that. The fifth thing we wanna talk about is having a solid plan when it comes to editing video on a Chromebook due to the lack of optimization for video editor apps. What works for me is normally typing out a script and I like to use Google Docs since that already comes on most Chromebooks. And if you don't like the web version of the app, you can download the app version from the Google Play Store. Now I will use this as a reference as I'm making my videos. And a lot of times I'll even go into it while I'm making a video clip. I'll come up with a better idea and I'll jot it in there just so I can communicate my message a little bit better. Now having a solid plan such as a script when it comes to video editing on a Chromebook is going to be very important even for the best video editor apps from the Play Store like PowerDirector. Now by having a solid plan, you'll know how you want your video clips organized in the timeline. And if you're using an app such as PowerDirector, which doesn't allow you to drag those timeline clips around, you don't have to worry about that because you're gonna place everything in the timeline how it's meant to be, and there won't be a need for any changes. Now having a solid plan such as a script is going to prevent any errors, and in return, that's going to save you a lot of time. And I speak from experience, I've been there, I've done that, I've made that mistake, 
And this is just something I cannot repeat enough. And then the sixth thing we're going to talk about is considering editing your video clips separately. So for example, instead of doing all your clips in one huge edit, take each single clip and edit them separately. And then when you get them trimmed to how you want them to be, you can throw everything together in one huge edit and then you can finish it off and then you can do it that way. Again, this goes back to apps not being optimized for the Chromebook. Now, of course, editing each video clip separately is probably going to take a little bit more time than editing them all together in one huge edit. But hopefully if you do each clip separately or the clips that you really need to do separately, it's going to produce a better video at the end. This is going to help reduce the chance that you put a clip in the wrong spot or it'll help when it comes to doing picture and picture video editing. It'll make that a little bit more simple. I could tell you from experience when trying to do a picture in picture clip in a timeline, if that picture in picture clip wasn't edited previously, it has gotten a little harder to edit it versus editing the picture in picture clip separately by itself and then adding it to the timeline. Hopefully that wasn't confusing at all. So the conclusion of this video, hopefully all of this made sense. And if it did not make sense and you have a Chromebook and you're going to do some video editing, you are probably going to find out the hard way. You're going to find out some of these things as I found out before, but hopefully some of this does make sense and you just take my word for it and you avoid the headache altogether. So that is pretty much it for today's video on how to edit video on a Chromebook version 2.0. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below. Maybe I'll do another video in the future where we do video editing on a Chromebook version 3.0. If you can, hit that subscribe button. It'll support the channel. These videos, they take time and money and it'll help us out. And until next time, Leon checking out.